Okay, back to that TC Boyle story. Um, we could just skip this and I could give you an assignment, but you deserve to have things put in perspective and you did some work. So let's, let's talk about this story. Let's look at some of your talking points. Um, and you know, your, your, your job was to read this story and set and, and come up with five talking points. So get those into me as soon as possible. I gave, um, that, that those instructions out in class, I think, uh, for that story. Read the story, send me your five talking points before Wednesday, okay, if you haven't done it already. Okay, um, these are some talking points from the other class, and the other, so they, they're sort of similar to the ones that you guys might come up with. Um, okay, one, one student writes, uh, the history teacher is also a coach stereotype. Okay, that's just a personal observation that the student made. Fine, it's true. Lots, lots of uh, uh, history teachers work as coaches. Social studies teachers, too. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Uh, somebody says that they really like the second paragraph on page 225. Uh, really likes the detail of the setting in the beginning. Okay. It was a Saturday night. Rain sizzling in the streets and the steaming. The windows, the dinner crowd beginning to rouse themselves over decaf cheesecake. The regulars drifting in to look the women over and wait for the band to sit up in the corner. Okay, so it's a bar. This is most of the, the whole narr narrative takes place in bars. It's the narrator is actually the narrator of other people's stories. We don't even know who this guy is until the very end. And still, we don't even get a really good fix on who he is. Um, but yeah, I do think that T.C. Boyle does a, a good job with his settings. Look at how he sets up his settings at the beginnings of his stories. You're going to be reading a few of these stories. You better have the book. If you don't, you better order it as soon as you can and get it because we're going to be working with it more. And I've been telling people for weeks, get the book, get the book. Um, so he does a really good job of, of setting up his stories. He solid. There's interesting detail. He puts you in the place. Uh, another student writes, the story is casual rather than formal. Yeah, it's told like, even though T.C. Boyle uses these fancy words once in a while, he, um, he's, it's, it's not like a British voice. It's not like a, a voice, a voice that's above you. It's, it's like somebody's talking to you, with you. It's how you talk to a friend. You use some of your own colloquialisms. Um, he tells a story. It's pretty smooth. Uh, it's, it's a good example of, a, of not a forced voice. Um, so look, look at his tricks. See what he does. Um, somebody else writes, I like how this story jumps to different storylines. Yeah, it is. It's, there's Jimmy. There's, wait, there's Jimmy, the guy that he meets at the bar. Who um, his his kid uh, chokes on his own vomit basically, and then there's Jimmy's brother, the other guy who was another loser at the bar basically, who lost something, um, lost basically his childhood, had to do all that stuff, um, take care of people, and then and then ends up finding Grace dead on the doorstep. I mean, that, what a metaphor that is. To, to have no grace in your life, to, to be graceless, to, to be down and out, um, to have, there is no God for this guy. I mean, he doesn't have grace, you know, he's, it's a religious term. Um, so that's a good metaphor. Um, another student writes, this was definitely a very dark story to me. One line sums it up. I didn't tell him that life is a struggle against weakness, fought not in the brain or in the will, but in the cells, in the enzymes, in the key, the DNA inserts into the tumbler of our personalities. I can't remember what page that's from, but the student then writes, what is the weakness we are all fighting? Grief, lonely, loneliness, fear, disconnection? Good questions. Um, 
it is a dark story. Uh, it's about people who've lost stuff, um, and it all boils down to a, a battle of the, in the DNA uh, at the cellular level. And I think that that's what all these characters have in common, in a way. Still, we're, we go through this whole story wondering who the heck is our narrator, telling other people's stories, um, and telling other people's stories with details that they couldn't have possibly supplied. Like... Um, Two twenty nine. For example, um, the narrator is telling somebody a uh, Jimmy's story, and he's embellishing the details. Jimmy couldn't have told him all this stuff. Like inside, he's describing a bar. It was like another world, like a history lesson, with jars of pickled eggs and Polish sausage lined up behind the bar, a display of campaign buttons from the forties and fifties. I like Ike. And a fireplace, a real fireplace, split oak, sending up fantails of sparks against a dr backdrop of blackened, blackened brick. Fantail. I mean, that's sort of fancy language. Our narrator, our narrator is a fancy guy. Um, I mean, on on the in the second paragraph of the story, he he's talking about going to the bar, and um, in the morning and he drank a glass or two of Chardonnay with my frittata and homemade duck sausage. That wasn't an Egg McMuffin he was eating. That was, he was having a Chardonnay and a frittata and duck sausage with fennel. I mean, that's fancy stuff, right? And here he is in this, in his dive bars and everybody's there for the same reason because they're, they've lost something, right? They're, they seem to be losers, but they come from different places in life. I mean, I, um, I think that now I'm, I'm getting into, I'm getting into my own talking points now. I think that this narrator, um, look at the title. When I woke up this morning, everything I had was gone. When you get to the end of the story, we learn that whereas these other people lost things in their lives, like first Jimmy lost his son, and then Jimmy's brother, was he really Jimmy's brother? I, I was confused about that. Um, he basically lost his childhood. Um, he lost Grace. Um, they seem to be from different social classes, though, more proletariat social classes than our narrator. We find out in the end that these guys, whereas Jimmy lost his son, our narrator held on to his son, and he held on tight. He wasn't going to, he saw that what he could lose, he wasn't going to lose it. But guess what? He must have lost it somehow. He must have lost his son. He, isn't there something mentioned about a nasty divorce or something? I can't remember. It's been a few days since I read this. Anyways, he tried to hang on, but it looks like because of our own inner turmoil battle with DNA at the cellular level, which is a theme in the story, He woke up one day, and even the stuff that he held on to tightly was gone. Um, some other talking points. Um, this narrator is still a mystery at the end. Um, the story leaves you scratching your head, trying to figure it out. That's sometimes frustrating for us as the reader. But you know what? That's good. If, if we get to the end of a story and we've got questions and we're trying to piece it together and we can talk to each other about it or we can go back and look, that means, that means something. I mean, I don't really know what his intention, what T.C. Boyle's intention with this story were, but I can't stop thinking about it and trying to figure it out. And um, that's good. Um, also the blind cave fish metaphor. Remember that, the, the, um, bus driver who was like a blind cave fish? Um, what, is, what symbolism, what, what, what interesting detail to put into your story? Um, anyways, uh, I don't know if this has helped anybody make sense of the story or not. I don't think it's, this is an easy story to make sense of. Um, we'll see what the next story does. Meanwhile, um, 
that's it for now. I will be in touch. Ciao.